looking for that perfect cupid's bow or perhaps you just want a bigger upper lip well stay tuned because in today's episode of dr nora i take you through five case studies showing you the techniques that i use as a cosmetic practitioner when i inject the lips To help us understand where we inject to get your desired outcome, we need to understand a little bit of the anatomy of the lip. So let's take a look at this diagram of the lip. As we can see here, we've got a border of our lip. Now that border is called the vermilion border. Now that will become useful later on when we're talking about the different techniques of where we inject the filler. Over here we've got the filtrum columns coming up from the top of the lip and these are the aspects that go from the top of the lip to the nose. And this area over here where the cupid's bow is, is called the filtrum. We've then got the body of the lip, which is the top and the bottom. And something that you guys may not know about is something called the wet and dry border. So if you were to just turn your lip outwards for a moment, you'll see that there is an area which is wet and there's an area that is dry. And that is called the wet and dry border. Now that's really important for cosmetic practitioners um, to use a technique, a certain injection technique, if they want to make the lip bigger. And we'll go into that in more detail in a second. On the sides over here, you've got the oral commissures. Now these are the areas that help to uh, support the lip and keep it upright and make you look happy. And very often patients will come to me and say, I feel happy, but my smile just doesn't make me look happy. What can I do about it? And sometimes just a bit of an injection into the oral commissures can help to lift up the lip and give you that smiley looking face that you're after. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of a backstory of the lips. It's time to talk about what you desire. So whenever you go to see your cosmetic practitioner, it's really important for you to come up with an idea of what you want your lips to look like. Now, this could be something that you've seen on social media, or perhaps you've had a treatment before in the past and you simply want to go back to that, or maybe you've got a desired outcome that you want to achieve. It's really important to know though, if you have got a super thin lip and you want to go to a really big, say Kim Kardashian lip, it might not happen straight away. And sometimes your practitioner might say to you, well, we can maybe achieve this, but we do need to do it over a series of steps because it won't happen with your first meal. So come up with a few pictures, a few reference pictures of things you'd like to achieve, hopefully within a realistic expectation, and think about what you want to have. For example, do you want to have both of your lips symmetrical, which means that the top and the lower lip are of the same volume, or do you prefer to have your upper lip slightly smaller than your lower lip? And we call that the golden ratio, whereby the upper lip is slightly smaller than the lower lip, which is the ratio of 1 to 1.6. So have a little bit of investigation and have a feel of what you think would suit your face. But if you're really struggling, then perhaps your cosmetic practitioner can guide you along the way. Okay, so let's talk about the different techniques that we use as cosmetic practitioners. Now, of course, these techniques do vary from practitioner to practitioner. And of course, what I say today may not necessarily be what your practitioner does. And that's why it's really important that you go to a practitioner who is uh, qualified in this particular area and you've obviously researched a lot and you can trust them too. Let's pull up our first case study, which is case study number one, whereby the patient comes in with no definition of their lips. Now, very often this could be somebody who might be a little bit older in age, perhaps has lost a lot of their lip volume as time has gone by. And they may present to me, usually present to me as, Doc, um, you know, whenever I put my lipstick on, it always bleeds into my upper lip. And this could be because as time has gone on, their volume is lost in both of their upper and their lower lip, but they may be starting to develop what we call barcodes lines or smokers lines, which is where you get lines on the upper lip over here. And as you put lipstick on, you talk throughout the day, the lipstick starts to smudge and it goes into the other areas that you don't want it to go into. So this kind of a patient, we say they've lost their definition of their lip. And so in order for us to help to redefine the lip, we have to be quite tactful with our injections. And so generally speaking, what we tend to do is we focus our injections into the vermilion border, which is the border of the lip. And that helps to give it its more pronounced look. And of course, we don't just do the upper lip. We never just do one half of a lip when you're doing lip filler, because if any of you, have, if any of you out there have ever had lip filler, um, they do swell up quite a lot. And if you just have one lip that's swollen and the other one's not, you kind of look a bit funny. So with that particular patient, we'll do the bottom lip because the chances are they would have lost the volume in their bottom lip as well. And you want to redefine the whole of the lip itself. So for someone who's got, say, a poor definition, we'll tend to focus our injections into the vermilion border, upper and lower lip. Now, of course, if that patient is also lacking a bit of volume, you may also just inject some filler into the body of the lip as well, just to help to give it that nice projection and to rehydrate the lip from what it used to look like in the past. Now let's talk about case number two. So case number two could be a person who's coming in with an asymmetrical lip and they feel that their upper lip is much smaller than their lower lip. And they say, you know what, I really feel that this just doesn't look right. My face doesn't look quite right. It's not in proportion, especially on the bottom half of my face. What can I do? Well, in order for us to help to increase the volume of the lip, we need to then think about the vermilion border. Do they still have definition? And if they do, can we then focus our injections into 
the body of the lip. And very often, this tends to be the case that um, they may be naturally born with a up, smaller upper lip than a lower lip, but they still have the definition of their lips, and in which case we can just increase the amount of volume they have in their upper lip. So on a practical example, if we've say got one mil of filler, we want to put more of the mill into the top lip than the bottom lip because the bottom lip is already big but the upper lip is the one that needs to grow and so your cosmetic practitioner will work out what's best for you and keeping in mind that we still do want to have uh, injections in the lower lip as well so that we get that kind of nice symmetry between the two. Now if the patient comes in and they have a super thin upper lip and quite a large lower lip then yes you'd still do that injection technique but you may want to tell the patient that you know what you might need a few mils over a period of time because what happens when you inject a lip with filler it will gradually increase with time so when they have their first lip yes it will look better but it may not be exactly what they're after and so you might still need to put another mil in say after about two to four weeks later and by doing this you can gradually increase the size of the upper lip to match your lower lip for example and I've had a lot of patients who have gone on this journey where they've started off with a really thin upper lip and they wanted it just to be a little bit more symmetrical with the lower lip and say so after about two maybe three mils they usually get that outcome and they're super pleased with it now a lot of you out there are probably thinking oh my gosh does that mean that I need to have two mils of filler each time I have my lips filled well no not necessarily when we have lip filler, it generally tends to last about six to nine months in length. And what happens, because we've injected our lips with filler, they actually increase in size. And surprisingly enough, they hold that size for a little while. So if you haven't had fillers, say for maybe 12 or 18 months, generally speaking, your lip will look smaller, but it won't necessarily go back down to what it was way back when you first started your journey. And that means that you can have just a top off of lip filler, um, not necessarily the whole two or three mils, but maybe just say, a mil and that will help to give you that nice plumpness back again. So it's not the end of the world if you have got a small upper lip and maintenance can be relatively okay but of course if you do leave it for say 5, 10, 15 years then of course you've got your natural aging process which is going to make the volume of your lips decrease and then you may need a few more mils to get you back up to where you were. Now let's look at case study number three. Somebody comes in and they want more of a cupid's bow and that could be somebody who along with the poor definition of the lip um, they may just want a little bit of accentuation of their cupid's bow and this could be a person who may be a female for example or even men who like to have that kind of that nice arch of the cupid's bow. Now for this injection yes we do also consider all of the other techniques for example whether we increase the volume of the body of the lips here and here or whether we do the vermilion border but certainly for this part we have to sort of concentrate our injections around the cupid's bow and for this we'll tend to inject into the vermilion border just off the cupid's bow in a nice sort of a c shape injecting as a curve if you like this injection technique can be very uncomfortable. A lot of people find this one very uncomfortable, but it does pay off in the long run. Alongside this, you may, your practitioner may also inject along your filtrum columns just to accentuate out your cupid's bow a little bit better. And for those patients, they will probably just have a very small quantity of filler in this area because remember, filler goes a long way and that will probably be enough for them to have a perfect cupid's bow. Let's look at case study number four. This is somebody who has got quite an inverted lip. That means that their lips are quite involuted. They can turn inwards and they want to bring them out into the light and they want to kind of have that bigger projection. For this person, we may also consider obviously looking at the definition of the lip, but if they have that definition and they're simply wanting more volume and they want the lips to turn out a little bit, not only will we consider injecting into the body of the lip, but we may then consider injecting into the wet and dry border. What this does is it helps to get the lip turned outwards a little bit and it helps to sort of open the lip up, if you like. So if you think about somebody, say, who's got lips like this and you inject into their wet and dry border, it just helps to bring the lip outward. Alongside this technique, we might also um, use something called tenting, which is where we do injections um, straight into the lip like so. And that also helps just to roll out the lip a little bit. So those are all techniques that we may employ as cosmetic practitioners to help to bring out the lip so it's not so involuted. And some of you may be familiar with the technique called the Russian lip technique, which I will leave a, a link in the description below of one of my videos of this. And that essentially does rely on tenting. And we do a series of small, tenting injections, vertical injections into the lip, upper and the lower, and it helps just to get that lip outwards and make it look a little bit more rolled and a little bit more projection and more voluminous as well.
And my final case study for you guys is supporting the lips themselves. Now this is a procedure that I use quite frequently in my lip fillers because you can imagine that the lips can be very heavy if you have injected them with say one or two mils and you do need to give them some support just to keep them elevated. And we want to try and avoid those people coming in saying, um, you know, I, I'm happy but I look unhappy. And for this technique, we tend to inject a little bit of filler into the oral commissures and depending on how much the person needs will tell us how much we need to inject. But the idea of it is just to help to give support to the lips and to give it a slight uplifting effect. Now, alongside with filler, you can also use some anti-wrinkle treatment um, into the depressor angular oris muscle, which is the muscle going down from the bottom of the lip to the chin, and that will also help to give you an uplifting effect. So with a bit of trickery, you can definitely help to support that smile, look at, get it looking upwards, and give it some support as well for all of those fillers. So there you have it, that's five case studies with some of the techniques that I use when I'm injecting lip fillers. And of course, if you yourself are considering lip fillers, please make sure that you seek an adequately qualified healthcare practitioner because these procedures are invasive and they do carry a number of risks and complications if they go wrong. I hope you guys have found this video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.